while China struggles with 7 nanometers and 5 nanometers chips, pouring national resources into developing lithography machines. The Bharat Empire has transcended Moore's law. The Indian Institute of Science's scientist team submitted a detailed project report to the Indian government, proposing the development of angstrom scale chips. The team plans to use two dimensional materials, such as graphene and transition metal dichalcogenides, to create angstrom scale chips far smaller than the current smallest 3 nanometers chips. These chips could be one tenth the size of today's smallest chips aiming to break through the limitations of traditional silicon-based technology. The project seeks to position Bharat as a global leader in next-generation semiconductor technology, potentially revolutionizing fields like artificial intelligence, quantum computing, flexible electronics, and wearable devices. In April 2022, the team first submitted the detailed project report to the Indian government's principal scientific advisor and resubmitted a revised version in October 2024. The report was then shared with the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. The project requests 50 billion rupees, approximately 600 million US dollars, over five years to build a research ecosystem and outlines a self sustaining roadmap after the initial funding phase. The Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology views the project positively, and discussions are ongoing. The principal scientific advisor and the ministry's minister have participated in multiple project meetings to explore its potential applications. The Bharat National Transformation Committee also recommended the project in September 2022 based on the Indian Institute of Science's report. Honestly, I was shocked when I heard this news. So much so that I asked Deep Seek and Grok if it was a rumor. But they confirmed it was true. One angstrom equals 0.1 nanometers. While TSMC struggles to improve the yield of its 2 nanometers production line, the Bharat Empire is already far ahead in specifications. To me, the Bharat Empire invented satellites, airplanes, and artificial intelligence in ancient times so inventing chips seems only natural. Modi's call to revive Bharat aligns with chips being a core technology in the current U.S.-China competition, and Bharat naturally cannot be absent. High-end chips remain the U.S.'s most significant technological advantage over China, perhaps even its last major lead, especially after DeepSeek's release dimmed the aura of U.S. companies' AI models. Chip manufacturing processes have become the strongest moat against China, with absolute control over TSMC, SML, and an ecosystem monopoly led by NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel. U.S. tech companies already use mature 3 nanometers and 2 nanometers chips, with even more advanced processes steadily progressing at TSMC. Meanwhile, China restricted by lithography machine bands, has struggled to break through to 7 nanometers chips and plans to mass-produce 5 nanometers chips this year, though with low yields and high costs. However, Chinese companies dominate mature chips above 14 nanometers, especially 28 nanometers, holding nearly one-third of global mature chip capacity. Through price wars, China continues to expand its share soon reaching 40% and potentially dominating most of the capacity. What is the Bharat Empire's status in the global chip industry? The answer is none. Bharat has yet to establish a modern advanced wafer fab. The Tata Group's joint venture with a Taiwanese company to build a fab faces significant challenges before production can start. Bharat currently produces only rudimentary experimental chips in labs, and relies entirely on imports, especially from industrial powerhouses like China and South Korea. Bharat netizens may disagree, claiming they have the world's strongest IT industry and the largest talent pool, destined to surpass China and the West. But the reality is that Bharat's IT industry output is a fraction of China's, let alone the US. Bharat's talent not only lags behind China in quantity, but also in quality by a wide margin. Bard has yet to nurture a single globally influential tech company, 
while China has produced Huawei, BYD, DJI, Unitree, Tencent, ByteDance, Alibaba, DeepSeek, and many other internationally renowned firms, covering the entire ecosystem from hardware to software. In contrast, the Bharat Empire, despite boasting about its IT superpower status and the Indian Institutes of Technology, has failed to revitalize its IT industry. Its ideas, exported to Silicon Valley, rapidly undermined the U.S.'s tech hegemony, making the U.S.'s absolute lead over China's tech industry shaky in a short time. Most global chip experts and chip company CEOs are of Chinese descent. Whether it's Huawei and SMIC in mainland China, TSMC in Taiwan, or AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel in the U.S., Chinese leaders are at the helm. The same applies to AI. Without GPT, Claude, or XAI, China has Qin, Dobao, and DeepSeek. The AI and chip industries are essentially an internal Chinese battle. The US-China tech war hinges on who can secure more outstanding Chinese engineers. I am optimistic about China's ultimate victory. This and the Chinese work ethic of diligence, perseverance, rigor, Humility and high discipline are inseparable. Both chip and AI industries require abandoning impulsive work styles, rigorously executing every project phase, working intensely under pressure, and patiently tackling each challenge. These are qualities Western engineers lack, not to mention barred engineers who only make PowerPoint slides. Finally, from a technical perspective, the Bharat scientist's proposal to develop chips using two-dimensional materials is theoretically feasible, and one country has already done it. China I previously shared a video showing China successfully produced a complete 32-bit RISC-V chip based on two-dimensional materials, marking China's resolution of large-scale integration technology for such materials in chip production. This technology can utilize about 70% of existing chip production line equipment, offering strong commercial value. However, scaling this technology for mass production still faces many technical hurdles. Let alone bar it. Even China would need at least a decade to reshape the chip industry with it. Bar it. A country with no chip industry foundation or even modern industrial base. How can it tackle the myriad challenges of chip design, trial production, testing, packaging, manufacturing, and application under such advanced processes? Relying on the aura of sacred cows? I recall the angry expression of a Bharat official at the Green Bharat Summit, unable to comprehend that Bharat lags behind China by five years in the electric vehicle industry. Not five days, but five years. If I were there, I would ask him, can Bharat produce qualified power batteries in five years? Or manufacture motors or electronic control systems? Or will Bharat have its own autonomous driving technology in five years? Can it produce even basic components like laser radar or high-performance vehicle cameras? Forget researching angstrom-scale chips. That doesn't showcase the Bharat Empire's technological prowess. Cow dung chips powered by pure natural green energy are the true symbol of Bharat's tech strength.